Hello, my name is Joel Miller, and I am a naturalist over at Dinosaur Hill Nature Preserve. Due to the ongoing pandemic, we were unable to bring you our open house all about birds over here at Lost Lake Nature Park. But just because we can't meet in person doesn't mean we can't talk about birds online, so join us for a wonderful video as we show you how to attract some birds at home. There are roughly 10,000 species of birds sharing this beautiful planet with us, and Michigan is lucky enough to host about 450 of those species, though not all at the same time. Many of our bird species are migratory, meaning they travel with the seasons to find food and climates that are more pleasant to their survival. Springtime is an exciting time for birding enthusiasts, as seldom seen birds are making their way through our state to their homes in northern Canada, or even just the Upper Peninsula. They're difficult to spot, and it takes some practice, but we would love to share with you some tips for attracting birds at your own homes, or common birds that you can identify out on the trails. Here at my house, I have a pretty common and straightforward bird feeder setup for meeting the needs and diets of several different species of birds. The first thing you're going to want, even above bird feeders, is going to be something to deter those pesky squirrels. I use a squirrel skirt. In my house, I use two different styles of bird feeders. One with smaller perches for songbirds, and another with larger perches for some of the beefier flock. This prevents large birds from eating all the seed in a day. I also have a suet feeder for attracting woodpeckers, but tons of other birds visit it for a quick dose of fat. Occasionally for the Orioles, I place orange slices in another suet feeder, though they prefer platform feeders, but I'm not made of money. It's also important to have a source of clean, fresh water. The birds will use this to stay hydrated, but you'll also see them taking baths. The best bang for your buck with bird seed is going to be black oil sunflower seeds. These offer high quality protein to the birds with a soft, easy to break outer shell. You're gonna wanna avoid seeds with a lot of filler in them. When it comes to suet, I prefer cakes that have seeds and berries embedded in them. You're going to want to check the packaging and make sure that the feed is at least 30% fat. If you're looking to attract hummingbirds, you'll need special feeder and nectar. For the feeder, look for something that has plenty of red on it to attract the birds. This way, you won't need to add dye to your nectar. You can buy pre-made nectar or quickly whip some up at home. All you'll need is granulated sugar and water. For my feeders, I do a 4 to 1 ratio, with 4 cups of water to 1 cup of sugar. Simply boil the water, add your sugar, stir, and let it cool. This homemade nectar will last in the fridge for about 2 weeks, but be sure to change the nectar in the feeder every other day as it spoils quickly in the sun. Hummingbirds are territorial, so be sure to hang this feeder away from your others. You'll find you can never have enough feeders. Within no time at all, birds will discover your feeders and return to feed. In just one day, I had visiting my sunflower feeders, gold finches, house finches, red-winged blackbirds, and tit mice. On the ground, cardinals and morning doves cleared the spilled seed, and my suet feeders brought several downy woodpeckers. I also had this camera-shy red-billed woodpecker. Birding is a great hobby, and setting up a feeder at home can help you learn to identify the birds at your favorite local park. Thank you for joining us. We hope you had fun, and we hope you learned something. We will be seeing you soon for a video all about wetlands and the critters we can find there. Stay tuned. A big thank you to Oakland Township Parks and Recreation for sponsoring this video. We hope to see you guys soon.